So now we're going to have a quick overview of an MQTT network. Um, as previously mentioned, MQTT operates in a publish subscribe model, which basically means clients are split into two different types. They're either going to, they're going to publish or they're going to subscribe. Now the specific devices that are acting as clients can both publish and subscribe at the same time if they want to, but what the broker will see is a separate subscriber and a separate publisher client. So individual clients like a laptop, a phone or whatever it might be can both publish and subscribe. There's nothing stopping it doing it, but what the MQTT broker will see is two different client IDs coming in for that device and um, subscribing and publishing. What publishing basically is, is that when a client has data of interest that it wants to share with the broker or share with specific clients, it will publish that data to the broker along a predefined topic that's user defined. And as long as there's a subscriber listening to the same topic, then that data will get routed to that subscriber. The data itself, unless specified otherwise, if there is no subscriber listening at that time, the data can get dropped or you can ask the broker to hold onto that data until the subscriber that wants the same topic comes online and then the broker can route that data to the subscriber. Uh, again, these are user defined um, options on how you want your network to operate or your specific clients to operate. But the key here is the broker is the central management component. All the data gets published to the broker, the broker manages that data and sends it on to anybody who is subscribed to topics of interest. Underneath it all, MQTT uses the TCPI protocol for getting its uh, individual data packets there. And clients themselves can connect to the broker, they can send the data and didn't disconnect, or they can connect to the broker and remain connected to the broker uh, for as long as they like. When the clients come online, they will issue a connect command to the broker. They will get an acknowledge from the broker. Following that, all authentication that the broker requires will be carried out. And then they can ask to subscribe or publish to the broker as long as they specify a topic along with their client ID and other options we'll talk about uh, in due course, um, they will be accepted by the broker. The key here is the topics for clients. Clients have to specify topics that they're interested in. It's how the data is rooted and it's how it's transferred. Without topics, there's no way to know where the data is supposed to go. Topics are generally structured and use a hierarchical approach uh, using the backslash as the delimiter, delimiter within a topic. Topics can be self-descriptive and in terms of the automation environment, they can and should include process IDs, tags. But the automation engineers, the users of the MQTT protocol, they define the topics which are going to be used. Um, so there's some general good practice when defining topics and how they should be um, created. So you should note that topics are case sensitive. Um, so they'll differentiate between upper and lower case. They're string based characters. So using a UTF-8 UTF encoding, uh, a topic has to have at least one car character and topics are not permanent. They are created by the clients um, and unless a client specifies otherwise, they will be removed from the broker when there's no clients connected using that topic. You can see some examples of topics down here. There's the slash, and this is a multi-layered approach. You have, this is the house, sensor one, a value, process, sensor one, status, tag ID, sensor two, value, but notice the use of the delimiter between various levels of the topics. So if you take a process and you have let's say three sensors on it. The first naming there in the topic could be the process itself, could be a cleaning process, it could be a um, sorting line or whatever it might be. You have sensor one, two and three, but you could have those sensor names if you wish. Or you could have a general category of sensors with another delimiter identifying the individual types of sensors. And then you can, you can have sensor values and you can have sensor statuses. But how you set up these topics and how you set up, I suppose, an overall um, topic um, semantics for your MQTT network is down to the automation team. There is no predefined way that MQTT tells you that your topics have to be. It's down to whatever you feel works for the automation environment you're in and the best practice you think you can use. So you might have naming conventions that you already use within the environment that you could um, adopt into topics. 
Topics are created when someone subscribes to the topic or publishes to that topic with a retained message enabled. And topics are removed when the last subscriber listening for that topic disconnects or when a client connects with a clean session flag to remove retained topics. So typically when clients connect to a broker, they don't ask for their topics to be retained. They connect, they publish their data to a topic, they're hoping there's a subscriber online at that time listening to that topic and the data gets rooted. But in lossier networks or networks that aren't as stable, you might ask for the topic and the data to be retained by the broker. And then the only way you can remove the topic from the broker is the same client eventually connects with a clean session flag asking to remove all previous data from the broker. Some general tips for creating topics. Ultimately, it's best to use either only all lowercase or only all uppercase. So pick one and go with it. Use simple but logical naming. So if you are working on a process, maybe the first layer of the topic is going to be the process ID or the process name itself. Maybe the second layer is going to be individual tags within the process that you can use and so on and so on. Ideally, separate your command and response and data topics from each other, especially the command and response. Avoid no space, avoid spaces within the topics and try and limit your topics to letters, numbers and dashes. Um, uh, and tr ideally, if you're setting this up for the first time within an automation or factory environment, also try and have a agreed template of what your topics are going to look like that's agreed between you and your entire automation team. One special topic of note is the dollar sys topic. This topic is fundamental topic that allows users to listen to parameters about the broker and network itself. So not all brokers will support the sys topic, but most do. It's a non-standard feature within MQTT um, and in some cases it will not be supported, but the main players generally do support this as a feature that can be used. The mosquitoes, the hive MQs and so on uh, will give you this option. They are very useful. The sys topics can be very, very useful for debugging a network. So if you're trying to figure out what your network's doing, you can subscribe to various parameters within the broker, and this might include how many clients connected at any one time, what was the maximum number of messages in flight at, any, uh, at, at peak operation, what's the maximum amount of data in flight, and so on, and give you some valuable information on how the network itself is operating. Finally, there is MQTT topic wildcards. Uh, and these are generally denoted by the hash for a multi-level wildcard and the plus for a single level wildcard. So if you wanted to subscribe to a, uh, your, your client to subscribe to an array of sensor data and so on, rather than uh, specifying every individual sensor that's um, publishing on the MQTT network, you, if your topics are set up correctly, you could use a wildcard to be able to listen to an array of these things. So if you have for example, process, sensor array, sensor one value, process, sensor array, sensor one status, and then process, sensor array, sensor two value. And you're interested in subscribing to all the sensor values uh, with one client, the use of a wildcard would allow you to do it. So if you subscribe to process, sensor array, the plus symbol and value, you're going to get messages from process, sensor array and sensor one, and process, sensor array, sensor two, um, but not any of the status messages. But if you changed uh, and you wanted to listen to all messages coming off the sensor array, you could subscribe to process sensor array hash and you're going to get all messages that are being sent by anything on that uh, subscribing to these or publishing to these topics. So it could be a useful way for one client to get multiple data sources without having to specify subscriptions for each of the data sources themselves.